Welcome to the SBI Podcast, offering CEOs, sales and marketing leaders ideas to make the number. Welcome SBI listeners, readers, and viewers. My name is Greg Alexander, and I am the CEO of SBI, a management consulting firm specializing in sales and marketing, dedicated to helping you make your number. This is the weekly SBI podcast, and its purpose is to help you make your number by getting your peers to share with you how they make theirs. Today's guest is Marian Taboy, and he is the Executive Vice President of Product Strategy for Genesis, an enterprise software company who is the market leader in the omni-channel customer experience and provider of contact center solutions. Marian is responsible for the company's product strategy. Marian, welcome to the show. Thank you, Greg. Well, happy to be here. Okay, right now, our audience, mostly sales and marketing leaders, is asking, why did Greg have a product guy on the show? So let me try to explain the purpose of today's show. So this show is about connecting the product roadmap to the sales strategy. Do this well and make your number. Do this poorly and miss your number. This is why Marian, a product leader, is on the show. He's going to help us think through this. So as always, we're going to use SBI's revenue growth methodology to guide our conversation, specifically pages 81 and 82. If you want to follow along at home, get a copy at salesbenchmarkindex.com forward slash 2016 hyphen report. Okay, Marian, I would like to begin our dialogue by discussing how you build your product roadmap. So let me jump into some of my questions. So first question is, how do you determine what market problems are most attractive to address? So that's a great question, actually, to start. The the question is relevant because our our business changed quite a bit in time. It had a major impact on the challenge that we were talking about. Uh, We moved from a B2B model to a B2B2C model, and and in that, cost-consumer trends are becoming incredibly important for us. So next to traditional sources like analyst uh, customers, of course, that we have, our own internal innovation process, we use more and more uh, actual consumers to, uh, to define what the problems are that we intend to go out there and solve. Uh, we, a, uh, we use a lean process in our ideation phase to determine which are the most attractive ones. Uh, do we have differentiation? Can we build a solution that fixes that problem? Can we win? And of course, is the return interesting enough to contemplate? Okay. And in terms of the role of the sales force during this early stage, which is trying to figure out which market problems to go after. Today's show is about connecting the product roadmap with the sales strategy. Is the sales force involved at all at this early stage of the process? Yeah, they are. They actually are point one. They're an input into that ideation phase from the start. So I like to have ideas come from uh, from all over the organization, uh, but also because cycles are getting shorter and shorter and shorter, specifically based on the fact that consumers are moving at hyperspe- uh, hyperspeed. Uh, we use sales quite a bit because they are great judges of needs, so not so much at the feature level, but when we talk about, if we look at the needs that our customers have to fit their consumer needs, uh, what do they see? And we use that quite a bit in, uh, in our ideation phase. Okay, very good. All right, let me go to my next question, which is, so now you've done kind of this market scan and all the variety of different sources. You've got a list of market problems that you might want to go after. You can't be all things to everybody. So how do you prioritize these market problems? So we, we use a, uh, of course we use an acronym, we call it a PFM, or Product Fit for Market. Uh, so when we did the, the previous exercise, what we really do is, is to step over just looking at revenue, because it's, it's a pretty simplistic measure. So questions that we answer in that exercise, are we able to find a market? If so, are we able to generate leads in that market? If so, is there enough of them to make the return interesting? If at all, yes, then is it feasible for us to build a product that we can mature in this space over time? And can the field win with that product? If that's all yes, then we have a high degree of what we call PFM. Uh, all these PFMs are built into a lean canvas in which we answer 10 major questions and, and some of these questions I just mentioned. And then we benchmark those PFM documents next to each other. So what is the most feasible for us to win with the highest return? And uh, based on that, we make our choice and, and go after it. The beauty of, of shorter sales cycles, of course, that you can uh, you don't have to linger around. You can 
as we call it, fill quickly, sounds really negative, but it's good to take an idea into production, see whether it fits, if it doesn't fit, extract it, and move on to the next thing. So that's the beauty of shorter sales cycles as well. So we do more lean canvases, or we take more PFM projects into the market than we used to, uh, and we, of course, try to win with all of them, but we can allow to, uh, to fill quickly as well. Okay. So I love the concept of product market fit, and I love the idea of can we win. I mean, the fact that you, as the product strategist, are asking that question is so refreshing to hear. Sometimes um, I find engineers asking questions that aren't relevant uh, to victory in the marketplace. So follow up to the second question, which is, as you're at this stage, you're prioritizing market problems. Are you involving the sales force there as well? Yeah, we do. We, uh, so I, actually, I totally agree with you that it's important to create something that you can win with. I'm a, I'm a terrible project, a product geek, <laughs> and I can come up with all kinds of ideas that don't stand a chance, right? Or just for one one specific customer. So we use a lot of SMEs in in our uh, in our sales organization to have impact and influence on that. Uh, we run projects and ideas by them, and as I said in the beginning, they also have the possibility to participate in the ideation phase, even bring ideas or innovation to the table. Uh, so we don't make those decisions in silos anymore. We don't have the time either to do that, and. Uh, if we would do it in a silo, we would lack and create a gap in communication. So we do that in massive lockstep with our sales force. In, in Genesis, we call that interlock. And, and we spend quite a bit of time on making sure that between sales, R&D, marketing, product, we are in complete lockstep or in interlock uh, going into uh, to a strategic period in time. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, my next question. So what is the process to maintain the product roadmap? Yeah, so I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to refrain from typical product management words, but... Uh, just to, to set the stage, I think that everybody knows that uh, we moved in the last decade or so from pure waterfall to, uh, to agile uh, methodologies that have all kinds of variations. But the, the, the biggest difference, of course, is that we went from really long-term projects that require careful planning, that need a certain level of perfectionism, actually, because there's no room for failure at all, to really quick iterations. And uh, so we use Lean, uh, which is a maturation of, of agile. Uh, that allows us to do quick con uh, iterations that constitute a loose uh, use case and it creates a lot of flexibility. The highest level that we use is, is milestone levels, which we can plan out for quite a long time. We actually do that for about three years into the future. Uh, under these milestones, we create uh, uh, use cases, and under these use cases, we create requirements. These use cases, we also plan out for quite a bit, at least 18 months to maybe even two years if we have the ideation already done. But the requirements are pretty short. So we keep the requirements as close as we can to the shorter iteration phases, uh, let's say three to maximum six months ahead. Uh, that allows the flexibility. That also requires sales to participate in it because you don't have a lot of time to do careful planning, to launch into the market, to get the sales ready. So they need to be involved at the milestone and the use case levels. And we interlock on that level. So within engineering, product management, sales and marketing, we are in interlock on these use cases and milestones so that everybody knows the bigger story that we're, that we're pursuing uh, over a period of, let's say, two to three years uh, going into the market. Okay. Let me ask a follow-up question to this. So is it your opinion that with the move to Agile and particularly Lean, that milestones and use cases have replaced the product roadmap? Uh, yes, it is my opinion, and I, I think that roadmap is a bit of a, of, a, of a difficult word sometimes because a lot of people still associate roadmap with a, a long-term committed plan, and, and I think that more and more companies should refrain from that. You shouldn't sell a roadmap. You should sell uh, what, what you have and, and build your uh, sales strategy on top of that. Uh, on top of that, you've got your milestones and your use cases that allow direction, right? So there's intent, there's aspiration, uh, it shows innovation, it shows thought leadership, it shows where we're going to take it into the future. It's something that you should share and, and, and talk about with your customers, but it's not necessarily the commit, committed roadmap because it will change. And uh, customers on the other side love the fact that they can insert an idea as well and get very, very quick feedback on that mm -hmm. instead of the two-year waterfall period that they had to wait to get that information back to. So, so yes, I would agree that, that uh, milestone and use cases have replaced the traditional roadmap. Okay. All right, very helpful. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Marian and I are going to discuss how to determine if something should be a new product, a new release, or a new bundle, and specifically how the sales force impacts this decision. And given that we just learned that when you go B to B to C, um, use cases and milestones and rapid iteration is key, this is going to make for an interesting conversation. So stick around after the break. Do you 
have too many things to do and not enough time to do them? Is finding time to learn best practices almost impossible? The SBI podcast is your solution. Turn time spent exercising, commuting, and traveling into productive learning time with a subscription to the SBI podcast. SBI podcast listeners get unique insight into real-world sales and marketing issues through interviews with your industry peers every week. Find us on iTunes by searching for Sales Benchmark Index Podcast and subscribe today. Welcome back. My name is Greg Alexander, and I'm the CEO of SBI. My guest today is Marian Taboy the EVP of Product Strategy at Genesis. And today we are discussing how to connect the product roadmap, or in Marian's case, use cases and milestones, because he uses the lean version of Agile, to the sales strategy. We're trying to get strategic alignment between the product organization and the sales organization. We're using SBI's revenue growth methodology to do it, specifically pages 81 to 82. And if you still don't have a copy of this, go to salesbenchmarkindex.com forward slash 2016 hyphen report. Before the break, Marian shared with us how he involves the sales force when determining which market problems to go after, how he maintains or keeps up to date his intent and his aspirations by involving the customer in things like setting milestones and developing use cases. And he makes sure that he builds things that the sales team can actually sell. On behalf of the sales leaders in the world, how great is that? During this segment, we're going to discuss how to determine if something should be a new product, a new release, or a new bundle, and how this affects sales productivity. So, Brian, let's jump back into the questions. And question number one is, how do you make sure each release solves a complete and useful set of problems so the sales team has a fighting chance to sell it? Right. So the, the word release in itself is already interesting, and it's a little bit of a, of a waterfall word, to be fair, is where you spend a lot of time on, on generating features and functionalities, and then you release it to the market, right? The, the agile or, or even cloud uh, introduction has, has changed it quite a bit. So what we do, and, and we're not there at every, every product, but we are moving to an environment where every use case is defined by one iteration. And uh, then it becomes a question of calling the right priorities at the right time. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have 10 features and then say, hey, I can only do eight in, in this iteration, so let's do those eight. And with those eight, I make half a use case happen. So that I don't give any weapons to the sales force to be successful with. That being said, I could also then say I'm going to take two iterations to do all ten, and only after the two iterations I'm going to give it into the hands of my of my sales force. So I've got choice, I've got flexibility, but what we mainly try to do is to associate a use case with a iteration, and then use time to plot uh, to plot that use case somewhere on a time frame that allows me to be successful the moment we're done. The prioritization is is one key. The other key is is teamwork. Um, and we talked about it before the break quite a bit of how sales is involved in, in this entire setup. It's absolutely crucial that they give feedback to me on whether the constituted use case allows them to win. And if I take something out, do I still have a minimum viable product to go into the market with? As soon as I, I hit below that, I know I don't stand a chance to win, so the entire testing of maturation of a product doesn't, doesn't work. So their input in, in that is, is really important. So prioritization and teamwork are the two elements that we use to make sure that we have complete sets of use cases uh, that we can win with in the market. Yep. This is going to seem somewhat like a sophomoric question, but MVP, minimum viable product. For the audience members who might not know what that means, would you briefly describe that for me? Sure. The, uh, and I, I promised myself I wouldn't use any acronyms, so I'm sorry I did. But <laughs> okay. the... Uh, 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 for, for us to, to go into a market with a, a, a product, you want to have a, a fighting chance to be successful and test the feedback of the, of the customer base on that. So uh, we uh, create a product that we would call minimum viable, so it has all the features and functionalities that you need to successfully sell into that space and allows you to understand the direction that customers expect from it. So it's really a test, a test case, right? Is there a market for it? And if so, where is this market going to take us? And, uh, and allow us to then mature into that direction so that the target market becomes bigger and bigger uh, if, if, we, if we set and, and find that information or that, that feedback is, is very useful. So instead of building this full-blown product, 
that takes us a, a number of iterations and then we're not sure whether it actually fits the market. We take one iteration product, we do the key features and functionalities, and that's how we position it into, uh, into uh, let's say, a limited customer base so that we know and can learn whether this product will be successful or not. Okay, fantastic. All right, let's go to the second question in this segment. So how do you decline use case ideas? that are not validated, so the sales force does not get distracted by ideas that will not help them make their number. Now we, we touched on that a little bit in the, in the beginning. We, so for every, almost every idea, because um, I would be uh, a little bit over the top if I say for every idea, but for almost every idea, we create a lean canvas uh, in which we, we ask those 10 major questions. So is there differentiation? Can we build it? Can we win with it? Is there uh, enough of an ROI? Uh, is there competition in this space, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, and hence, based on reason, we either say yay or nay. And, uh, and I think it is a really important question uh, because if you say no without any reason, these ideas just keep on lingering on and you, you get this strange cycle of, of trying to get something back in. And uh, I don't think that is the right way to spend your energy. Uh, I believe uh, that I actually I don't believe in the, it's not built here syndrome either, right? So everybody should be able to do ideation with product management and take that ideation to the next level. So sales guys can fill in a lean canvas for me as well. And I take the lean canvas and as I said, we benchmark them. And if there's real value, val, uh, value in that idea, we'll take it to the next level. But if it's not, then we'll explain why not. And, uh, and then it becomes teamwork again because uh, as a sales organization or a field organization, you then also need to accept that we don't want to manage the exception. We don't want to go out on a limb. Uh, we have a, a strategy that we want to execute. We want to stay with that strategy. And hence, we say no to this idea with these and these reasons. Right. Let me uh, challenge this uh, MVP, <clears throat> lean, agile, use case, milestone-based development cycle. One of the challenges that I've seen with companies that use it, not universally, but I'd like to get your opinion on it, is that when you're rapidly iterating, it becomes really difficult to keep the sales force up to speed with you know, the, the new iterations that might give them a competitive advantage when trying to win a sales campaign. So how do you make sure the sales force is ready for all of this? Right, so we, we use a, a concept called commercialization, which is the overarching process that we use uh, from a ideation phase to, uh, to a growth phase. And in, in commercialization, we have a vehicle in which everybody participates. And only when everybody in that team says we're ready to go, we release it to the field. So we don't release iterations to, uh, to the sales organization. We release full use cases to the sales organization. So I can go through several iterations uh, that just produce uh, features or functionalities without really releasing the iteration to the sales organization because I haven't fully commercialized the concept of what we're trying to achieve. So only when we reach that full commercialization moment, we'll release to the field. That also means that the field is ready. We're ready to take care of it. We're ready to implement it. We have all the content that we need. Partners are enabled. Uh, there are no surprises. The sales support model is clear. Everybody knows what is in it and what is not in it. Uh, so I think we're actually more articulate and ready than we were ever in the, in the waterfall methodology. Mm -hmm. So even if it's quicker, uh, I think we are more ready to be successful in the field than, uh, than we were when we had two years of planning time. Okay, fantastic. I mean, uh, a shining example of the benefits of Agile. Not only is yeah. it better, but it's faster. And it's a really good question, Greg, because the, uh, sometimes you, people tend to get lost in the energy of, of quick and flexible, flexible uh, movements, right? And you don't want that to happen. So communication is absolutely key. That's why interlock in our organization is so important to be successful uh, because you can't work in functional silos anymore. I think that's why it's one of the reasons that product uh, geeks like myself get onto these shows, also report to the CEO, and sit at the same table, because interlock between those two groups is absolutely key to be successful. Yeah, I agree, 100%. All right, hey, sales leaders that are listening or watching or reading this, listen up. If you don't know the answers to these questions, get with your product strategy leader and figure this out ASAP. If your product leader does not prioritize product investments correctly, you're gonna miss your number, it's that basic. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Marian and I are going to summarize this into an action plan you can implement immediately. So come back after the break. Making your number is hard. Your problems are complex. Complex problems need complex solutions. Introducing the SBI Magazine. Read in-depth stories written by award-winning journalists about how your peers have overcome their problems to make the numbers. 
when you need more than a tweet, social post, or blog article, turn to the SBI Magazine. Go to salesbenchmarkindex.com to subscribe. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Greg Alexander, and I'm the CEO of SBI. My guest today is Marian Taboy, the EVP of Product Strategy at Genesis. Today, we're discussing how to connect the product roadmap, or if you're an agile lean shop, milestones and use cases, to the sales strategy, which is covered in pages of 81 and 82 of SBI's revenue growth methodology. In segment one of this show, we discuss how to prioritize market problems, um, maintain a product roadmap if you're more traditional, so the sales team has a compelling product set to sell. In segment two, we spoke about how not to distract the sales force with ideas that won't sell and how to get a sales team ready for launch. And the innovation there was is that the sales team is involved early on in the commercialization process, which is great. This is our last segment of the show, so let's offer the audience some advice on how to use what they have learned today. So, Marian, I'm going to ask you a tough thing here, but try and summarize for me what we discussed today into three actions an audience member can take immediately to connect their product strategy to the sales strategy. Right. That is, that's tricky. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to take the liberty to make one general statement before, uh, before I talk about the three actions. But uh, I want to kill one myth now that I have the opportunity in, uh, with a sales and a marketing uh, audience. Uh, it's product managers like to say yes as well. So it's not that we are the no sayers in an organization. We love to do all the things that sales request. And, and we also know that reality is different and, and you need to make choices. I see a lot of organizations out there spending cycles of energies on, on wrestling with that concept of uh, PM says no, we're going to go a different route to see whether we can get a yes. I think as an organization, you're way better off to trust those decisions. Work as a team and move on. And, and if it uh, turns out to be a bad decision, then fail quickly and, and go on to the next thing. But trust the decisions that your product managers are making, uh, because I think that most of the times they're good, they're genuine, and they're based on facts. So, so that's one thing. Uh, but then three actions that, that you can take. Uh, first of all, for me, it's, it's key uh, in the interlock domain that you develop your sales strategy on what you have today. Uh, if you look at a number, develop it based on what you have today. Make sure you have a support model for next innovations that are coming into, into your domain, uh, but don't make that the core of your plan. If, if I see a sales plan that is for 90% based on innovation that's not yet there, it's bound to fail. Mm. So build your plan based on what you have today. Uh, second thing is don't sell a roadmap. Sell commits, but don't sell a roadmap. Uh, use it to show thought leadership, differentiation, uh, but sell commits. Um, uh, if you create expectations that are based on a roadmap that is not planned yet, then uh, you're bound to, to hit trouble somewhere down the road. So sell commits, don't sell a roadmap. And then last but not least, use product management. Uh, I, in my budget, actually allocate quite a bit of money for, uh, for travel and expenses. Uh, bring them with you, get them in front of your customers, make them travel, uh, because I think it's, uh, it's too easy for a product manager to just sit in an office, make them travel, and bring them in front of customers. Even just listening to customers is absolutely gold for people like that, because they will get input about needs, about thoughts, about elements that are on the skirts or the periphery of what you would normally discuss, and it's really crucial information for product management. So use them uh, and bring them in front of your customers as well. So those would be my three actions that I think you can take today. Excellent takeaway value. I'm going to put these in kind of sales terminology. Your sales strategy needs to be sell what's on the truck right now. Don't sell a roadmap, sell commits. I love that, which demonstrates thought and leadership and you're leading your customers. And then make everybody sell. I mean, the product managers want to get out there. I mean, Marian's case, he actually has a budget for travel and he wants his product managers out meeting with your customers. Listen, it's hard enough to make your number. You don't have to do it alone. Get these product managers out there and have them help you, and it's going to help them in the process. All right, let me offer the audience my two cents. So you, and I'm speaking directly to you, sales leaders, you cannot make your number if your product strategy and your sales strategy are not fully integrated. It's that important. Your company is going to spend somewhere between 10 and 20% of annual revenue in R&D, and it better be on the right thing so you can sell. If they're spending those dollars on things you can't sell, the end is getting closer and it might be time to go look for a job. So this is why you care. So go partner with your product leader, hopefully you have one as enlightened as Marian, and connect the product strategy to your sales strategy. If you wanna make sure you get this right, 
and maybe you haven't done it before and you want a little assistance, consider having one of our experts help you. For it's not as easy as you think. And you can do that by going to salesbenchmarkindex.com forward slash 2016 hyphen workshop. Fill out the form and we'll send somebody out to you. Marian, thanks so much for letting me interview you today. You really added quite a bit to the conversation. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. I also want to thank you, our audience, for tuning in. Producing this show is not easy, but it is very enjoyable for me personally because you are responding so well to it. Thank you for the killer download numbers and all the positive comments you send me via email. Until next time, I wish you good luck as you try and make your number. This has been the SBI Podcast. For more information on SBI services, case studies, the SBI team and how we work, or to subscribe to our other offerings, please visit us at salesbenchmarkindex.com.